Also today, Hezbollah has announced that Naim Qasim is to lead the militant group in the wake of the killing of Hassan Nasrallah. Indeed, Hezbollah's military wing has been badly hit in Israeli strikes with a number of top leaders killed. Well, let's cross straight to Beirut then and speak about this with Rawad Taha, our correspondent there. Rawad, uh, your thoughts then on the appointment of Qasim? Because, look, he is a founding member of Hezbollah, but he is not somebody who's seen really as having the charisma, the presence of someone like Hassan Nasrallah. Uh, indeed, so in particular, uh, we received the statement by Hezbollah earlier today of the official appointment of uh, Naim Qasim as the Secretary General of uh, Hezbollah. He is one of the founding members. He was the Deputy Secretary General uh, for uh, for uh, Hezbollah for most of his uh, his time, uh, he is not a military leader. He is uh, he is more connected to uh, the social apparatus and the political apparatus of Hezbollah within Lebanon. So that comes when when it comes to uh, the non governmental organizations affiliated with Hezbollah, uh, the social networks of Hezbollah, uh, the financial institutions of Hezbollah as well as the schools and educational systems of Hezbollah. So that is primarily what Naim Qasim has been overlooking for the past two uh, decades in particular. He has limited, uh, limited the capacity when it comes to uh, military uh, commandership. And we've seen all those uh, uh, three statements by uh, Naim Qasim over the past month since the assassination of Hassan Nasrallah. Uh, the first one was uh, labeled very much as not a very charismatic statement. It was uh, shortly after the assassination of uh, Hassan uh, Nasrallah. Uh, a lot of questions on whether Naim Qasim could be able uh, to lead the organization into this uh, next phase. However, uh, as a lot of people have been uh, speaking here in Lebanon, especially uh, those who are uh, opposing Hezbollah, that uh, this is just a confirmation of what, what, what's been evident over the past weeks that uh, Naim Qasim is perhaps the only person remaining from Hezbollah's older uh, generation and old leadership. And he has been the person who's been uh, talking to Hezbollah supporters over the past month. So his confirmation uh, today was sort of how expected, especially that there are no alternatives after the assassination of uh, Hassan Nasrallah's potential successor, uh, Hashim Safi Dean, and also the assassination of uh, Sheikh Nabil Kawouk, another leading figure within the organization. And Rawad, speak to us at the same time about what is happening in the ground war in the south of Lebanon. I mentioned um, these reports. We don't have confirmation, but reports that Hiam, um, a village in the south, um, that Israeli tanks have entered there. We're also hearing this afternoon that uh, UNIFIL, the UN mission on the border, has been hit, a number of soldiers injured, and possibly that is a Hezbollah fire. Uh, indeed, I just spoke with the UN spokesperson uh, Tenente a few minutes before uh, before our conversation. He did confirm that uh, uh, this uh, this firing came from uh, the north. So uh, potentially, it is uh, according to the statement released by UNIFIL, it is possibly a Hezbollah uh, a rocket or an organization affiliated with Hezbollah. So that this fire came from the northern side. Uh, of the border, rather from the southern side of the border, so not from the Israeli troops this time. UNIFIL has been caught up in this crossfire between uh, Hezbollah and Israel multiple times over the past few weeks. A few incidents uh, uh, reported when uh, UNIFIL was under fire from the Israeli side. Today, we're hearing confirmation that uh, the last uh, uh, the last attack on a UNIFIL headquarters base in Nakura came from the north and thus from Hezbollah's side. So UNIFIL is caught up in this uh, crossfire. When it comes to the situation on the ground in particular, uh, we know that Israel has been conducting uh, uh, some sort of uh, limited ground incursions into Lebanese territory, especially the border villages. We know that most of the villages across the border were infiltrated by uh, Israel, where Israel does uh, some sort of uh, uh, a ground maneuver to clear some houses, to reach out supposedly a number of tunnels and Hezbollah infrastructure. Now that has been done alongside most of the border villagers uh, uh, from uh, the western part of the border near Nakura up till uh, the town of uh, Kfarkila in the east. Now east of that is the town of Khiem. The town of Khiem is a major Hezbollah stronghold. It is the largest town 
uh, 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 in terms of population uh, near the border. And it's also slightly north of the border, so it's not directly at the border. So yes, uh, this advancement is a significant advancement into uh, the town on, uh, of Khiem. It has been confirmed that uh, Israeli soldiers have been present in that town since the early morning hours. Clashes reported between them and uh, uh, Hezbollah. Uh, we're yet to see what's, gonna, what's the situational, what's the operational situation of Khiem is going to be over the next few hours of days. We know that the Israelis uh, don't necessarily hold operational control of the areas which they infiltrated and where they conducted military operations. Most of the towns were uh, infiltrated. Israeli troops were reaching uh, potential uh, Hezbollah facilities and underground infrastructure, booby trapping those tunnels, uh, 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 and then leaving back into Israeli territory in some case. So we're yet to see if that's also going to be the case in the town of, uh, of Khiem or not, or whether the Israelis would want to achieve some sort of an operational control.